hi, we're back on the Nightlight project again, and if you recall last time, I just finished reflowing the top side of the board, but unfortunately I'd ordered the wrong microcontrollers. So they have finally arrived from China, uh, the PIC 24F 32KA301s in the SSOP20 package, and I didn't mask off the solder paste from the PCB. So this has got lead-free solder already flowed onto the board. So we're going to try using some of this Solder King Halogen Free Rework Gel and see how that actually behaves when we try and reflow that microcontroller onto the board. Right, so I think there's a little bit of cleaning up to do. I'll probably stick this in the ultrasonic bath, but that rework gel worked absolutely no problem. So uh, it nicely wetted the lead-free solder and caused us uh, not really too many issues at all. There's a little bit too much solder on each of the pads, which is why we had a few bridges, especially with one of these SSOP packages. Uh, they're quite fine pitch, so if you've got any excess solder, it tends to bridge quite easily. But yeah, no problems with this. Let's sort out the other side of the board. Now because this is a double sided load board and we've already got components on the underside we do need to be a little bit careful with reflowing the PCB because we don't want the components on the underside to drop off. However we do need to apply some heat to the board. Because this is a 2 ounce copper board it needs quite a lot of energy to raise the temperature up enough to reflow properly. So we've set the hot plate to around 100 degrees C and this has been on there for about a minute so we should be able to apply some heat from the hot air gun. Right, so I was just checking the polarity of these LEDs, just making sure that there were no solder bridges under the LED. And then I came to the green and the blue LEDs and I noticed that they didn't light up. And if I swap round the leads, they are actually the opposite polarity to the red and the amber. So have a look at this absolute nonsense. So these are King Bright LEDs and this is the red and amber and you can see we've got the polarity mark here next to pin 2 which is the anode. And then if we look at the green one and the blue one, they've switched the LED round but maintained exactly the same package. Now why on earth have they done that? That's absolute nonsense. Obviously it's my fault for not checking the data sheet for every single colour, um, but they've used exactly the same part number and then just changed the final part depending, depending on which colour you've chosen. So that's absolutely stupid. I mean they have stopped selling it now. I've noticed um, Farnell don't sell these LEDs anymore, so uh, I'm not going to run into this problem again, but just an example of, uh, you know, really odd design. I, I guess there must be a reason behind the heat sinking. It must be to do with the thermal packaging and the way that the chip is designed, but you would have thought they'd be able to at least change the polarity mark so that it makes sense. So it's not a big deal. I will be able to swap these LEDs around, and then what we can do is um, solder the rest of the components on and get it installed into the nightlight.
Right, so now we've got the LEDs in the correct orientation, the next thing is to install the infrared receiver and also an LED. So the infrared receivers are these Toshiba 38 kilohertz infrared receivers that do all the demodulation for you. And that gets mounted into the three holes just here. There's also newly added an LED because on version one of these PCBs, you couldn't actually tell if the lamp had received the infrared signal. So this time we've got an LED that sits next to it. And every time it receives a valid code, this LED lights up for 100 milliseconds. So once the PCB is in position and screwed in, obviously, it sits in line with this ridge on the light. So the PCB and above is where this translucent material is. So simply by having the infrared receiver pointing out to the side here, um, it will receive the light through the translucent material. And, uh, you know, we don't need to make a hole or anything for it. We're actually going to use the previous PIR hole for the DC jack. So we've got some DC jacks just to the side here. And this hole just happens to be the exact diameter for one of these um, DC jacks that will take here a standard 2.1 by 5.5 millimeter connector. So we can screw that in from the inside, put some flying leads to the PCB, and then on the other side is where we're going to have the infrared receiver just on the inside here. And so with those components in place, you can see we can just screw all of these PCBs into place. We're just reusing the previous screws that came with the units where the old PCB was screwed in. So before we put the lids on, we just need to connect up the DC jack. So we need to make sure we've got the nut on first, and then the DC jack is going to come through this hole in the side, and then we can solder that on and then affix the nut onto the back of it to hold it in place. And it's worth just leaving the wires a little bit longer than they need to be so that you can still reach the programming header without having to remove the DC jack. But everything uh, should then just slide in. There we go. And we can put the two long screws back into the bottom of the unit. And also the little stubby screw just to hold the battery compartment closed that's no longer used. So to power these lamps, I've been using these Power Packs power adapters. So this is from Power Packs UK, 5 volts, 1.5 amps. And these are seem to be really high quality power supplies. The ones that I've had running have been running for about five years now and still working absolutely fine. And they still make this particular model, the SW3517. And the one thing that is quite nice about these is they have a reasonably long lead length. Because when I was looking at these 5 volt power adapters, Half the time the lead was only one meter, which means that really, um, you know, you have to be quite close to the plug uh, for wherever your nightlight is. I think this is almost two meters in length, which gives a lot more flexibility as to where you position the light. Now also, you can obviously use these little power leads, the USB to 5.5 uh, millimeter jacks, and then that means that you can take it with you if you need to um, take it on holiday, for example, you can plug it into a power bank. Or if you've only got a 5-volt um, a USB charger, you can obviously plug it in with a USB lead and then plug it in with that. Right, so I've got these programmed up now and I've set a few presets on the remote control. So we can change the brightness of them quite easily. So this should end up looking like a cool white, for example, once they've ramped up to their maximum brightness. Then we can go to a much warmer white. Then we've got some of the colours, and then of course we've got the obligatory colour changing mode. Now I'll put a graphic of the menu structure on the screen, it's pretty straightforward, but basically you use the left and the right buttons on the remote control to select the colour of the LED you want to change the brightness of, then you use the up and down buttons just to change the brightness of that LED. And if you want to store that as a preset, you press the zero button three times, the green LED lights up permanently, and then when you pick a number from 1 to 9, it stores it in that memory location. And then that's stored even if you remove power to these lights. So I think I've got a very small amount of work to do on the firmware. Uh, there's a few changes that I want to make, but I think these are working a lot better than my previous version. So I'm pretty happy with these. So what I'll do is I'll put the design files on my website, which is linked down below, along with the product number for the actual LED light as it was originally, so that you can build these if you want to. 
uh, or do whatever you want with the files. But I do think these look quite nice. The net result is really good and uh, we've got one of them set up upstairs now and in the in the bedroom at night time you have these on the very lowest setting and it gives a really nice glow just so you can see in there without it being completely pitch black. So uh, these do absolutely um, everything that we need it to and then when you want to you can set the brightness quite high and use them as general illumination in the room. So I'm quite happy with how these have turned out. They seem to work a lot better than the previous version and the little green LED so that you know when you've pressed the remote control uh, is you know, a really nice feature compared to the previous version. So I'm quite happy with those. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you to JLCPCB for sending the boards. But until next time, thanks for watching.